Okay, as per special request of one of my viewers, this is the very first time I'll be using my voice in one of my videos. Uh, please excuse, I'm not a native speaker and my language, my English has been, well, sort of become rusty over the few years. What you can see here are two of my RGB lead ring boards. The left one is unhacked and the right one has been well, what's the word for it? Uh, vocabulary, vocabulary, I can't remember. I guess augmented or improved might be a right, a good word for it. Um, on the right side you can see that the board switches between a mode that's equivalent to, to the left one and then after about two seconds it should get noticeably brighter. This is done by parallelizing the, uh, the the outputs of the chip. So the left one uses three GPIO, GPIO pins to drive the LEDs and the right one switches between using three and using six. So basically it, it can double the current going th through the LEDs and making it brighter. And the additional cost of doing that is three wires and three resistors. Gives you basically double the brightness, although only in this static mode. As soon as you switch to the, the pulse width modulation, the effect is noticeable, but not very much. I guess that's due to the fact that the, the, the output stages of the chip have some finite turn on and off times and the the PWM frequency is so fast that the the output FETs don't really turn on fully. So you can see it but it's not very pronounced. Whereas if you turn on the LED statically, which means you only get well a few colors and only one color at a time, um, you see that the effect is pretty, well, noticeable. Uh, there's also some, some piece of code that um, implements a mode where you don't have full RGB color but just six or seven colors, which is not as bright as this one, but still brighter than full RGB mode um, but you have the choice of displaying six or seven colors um, at the same time and you can set any LED to, to any one of those seven or six colors which is red, green, blue, yellow, turquoise, purple and white and well off. And what you can see here also is that those two boards are not in sync, which is caused by the fact that um, they run on the internal RC oscillator, which drifts and, well, they are out of phase. This can be sort of fixed if one additional GPIO pin is used as a sync pin that has to be put into the code and it so, sort of works. It's, it's a bit nasty sometimes, but it can be can be made work. I should have used proper crystal or at least an, an, uh, a ceramic oscillator but I wanted to keep part count, part count down and to keep it as cheap as possible. So one of those boards here, the left one that's unhacked costs about well, nine euros and thirty-five cents plus shipping, which is you. You can do the math. It's, I guess, maybe thirteen or fourteen dollars if you want it. And if you click on my blog, you can find the link and, and get it if you want. Um, those those boards come as a do-it-yourself kit, but until September thirtieth, th there's an offer that I will assemble it for you for free. Afterwards it costs I guess 2 euros per board to to assemble it. Unhacked. I, w I won't do this hack for you. You'll have to do it yourself. 
and those boards are fully Arduino com compatible as far as the software environment is concerned. It has auto reset if you have a, an FTDI adapter that has the DTR signal which is data terminal ready. You can just plug it in and upload code as if it were an Ardu Arduino. Arduino, whatever it's pronounced. Yep. Okay, this is this is it. The first time I've recorded my voice for one of my video videos and well I hope the one who uh, complained about it is happy now. <laughs>